Edges are really important for good compositing. If you ever want to merge a CG render behind a defocus or motion blurred edge, you will always have edge problems. In this video, I'm going to break down how to correct this very common compositing problem. Now, you might think the solution is simple, just take a roto mask, defocus it, and cut out the CG render. However, this is the incorrect approach, and you will always run into bad edges if you do this. Defocused or motion blurred edges will always be semi-transparent, and this means we get color contamination in between the objects. When everything's in focus, it's less of a problem because you can just roto the sharp edge. We know logically this tree is tan and white, but if we rotoscope a tree with a defocus, we can see the edge. So if we erode in and edge extend that color out, then we reapply the original alpha, compared to the original we see the correct color in the edge. So now we have three images, the background, the CG object, and the patch that we're going to put over the top. First the sphere goes over, then we mask the sphere against the patch, and then the patch goes over the top of our CG. So I'm going to cover this process in four parts. Part 1, the bad method. Part 2, the node setup. Part 3, merging it together. Part 4, where edge extent fails and how to fix it. And for anyone who's looking for more advanced examples, there's a link in the description to some new projects in the beginner series for Nuke. So hopping in Nuke now, I'm going to show a quick setup on how this sphere was made just for the beginners and showing some different node setups to give people ideas. Uh, just pretty much it's a radial, uh, kind of grade it down a little bit and we, add, we roto some ambient occlusion with some simple roto shapes into some grades. And for the light dappling effect, I basically just took the background image cropped it to smooth the edge so we don't get a sharp edge. So there's a softness thing in the crop node. Uh, you could do a luma key to kind of capture some of these little light pools. We can blur it out a tiny bit and then we can use that as a as a grade uh, mask. So the, the grade is plugged into a mask. And we just basically push it up a tiny bit in the gain and we can multiply a bit of warmth into that. So that's essentially what's happening here. Two different uh, copies of the same image uh, to create this sort of fake render just for this example. So uh, just some different ideas there on, on some basic node setups for creative use. So let's hop into the part one, which is don't do this the, for the motion blur defocus edge like I explained in the uh, quick demo there. We have our sphere, we roto it out and we stencil it uh, and we put it over the image. So that's like intuitively as a beginner what you might think is the simplest way and logically it would make sense, but we on defocused edges, of course, we can't do this, like I explained in the in the breakdown. So now that we understand the reason why, um, you know, don't do this uh, unless it's really in focus and it's really just, you know, if it's a if it's a tiny bit of defocus, you could probably do it and and maybe an edge extend. But you know, I would say in general, if it's out of focus or motion blur, this is not going to be the approach. So uh, everything is based on what you're doing. So. The second method here is the edge extend, and here's the method of doing it. So there are different ways to actually ar to arrange these nodes. So I'll basically put the script in the beginner series for this project if people are looking for extra information. Uh, there are different ways to arrange nodes and they do the same result. And there are many nodes that actually do the same things. There are actually many edge extend nodes you can download for free on Wikipedia. So I'm gonna show this setup. I think it's the most logical uh, and easy to understand for someone who's starting out. So essentially what we have is our picture. We have the roto that's actually in focus. So no defocus has been applied yet. See, it's actually branched down in this direction. So what we're doing here is we have a solid alpha in our picture. That's what the shuffle here is doing. So it's, it's just creating a solid alpha. And we're taking the eroded version of this roto. So we're eroding it in just a tiny bit. If we look at the alpha channel, and we disable and enable, you see that it's basically shrunk in. And we're gonna mask out the color of the image. So if we disable and enable, we see we're just chopping off the defocus edge there. And we're using the default nuke edge extend node. Um, no custom node here. Just, I just wanted to show the basics. There are custom nodes that do sometimes a better job, for example, but I wanted to keep it simple. So edge extend, and what you need to do here is you basically push this little road up and down until you get the color that you want. So it's essentially pushing around the color. We've already done the erode into the color, so you might not have to mess with it too much. Um, sometimes I like to do it manually uh, in this sort of way where it's very visual and you understand exactly what's going on because um, this process of eroding into the color can all be done directly within the edge extend node, uh, which is essentially this setup over here but we're just gonna explain it in this, this one setup here. So without doing it uh, all inside the node, we just do it manually so we really understand what's going on. So we edge extend it out, and this is essentially just pulling out the color, uh, and we're using the source alpha. So the alpha that's coming from this stream, if we look at the alpha channel, it's looking at this. It works better with sharp edges, so 
you, you want to use a sharp edge to do this. We extend out and that's all good to go. Now, we don't want to apply the sharp edge as the alpha because we want it to still be out of focus. We're trying to fix an out of focus edge. So the defocus is actually into its own stream here. We have the roto, which is like this. We defocus it. So defocus is being here and we copy that back into the color stream. And this is why it's always good to always think of color and alpha as two different things. We're doing all these crazy things to the color channel, but then we're gonna put the alpha channel back into this image. So if you look at the alpha channel by hitting A, that's what this copy node is doing. It's taking this alpha and copying it back into the stream, but we still see it's not like the final image and that's where the pre-multiply comes in. So if you pre-multiply it, it's taking the alpha and cutting it out against the colors that you've modified. That's why this is more powerful than Photoshop or After Effects where you don't separate your colors and your alpha very often. Uh, this is actually a very common workflow in Nuke to separate those two things. So this is the same setup. I won't explain it here, but the script is here for those people who are in the beginner series. But this is essentially what we have. So we have something that has the colors in the edge and we don't wanna actually put this patch everywhere over the image. So I'm gonna disable this for a second. We don't wanna put the patch like up here because why would we double up the tree? We kind of like creating a new edge and that's a new problem. Really all we wanna do is cover up a CG and just fix the edge that it's getting put behind. So that's where the mask comes in. So we have this layer or this image that we've created and we have the alpha from the sphere. And so we take the sphere alpha, you see I've branched it down separately. We branch it down separately and we're gonna mask the, that patch so that we only apply the patch over the area that we're trying to cover. So we take the alpha here. I've done a little bit of an erode to soften the edge and I'll show you why in just a second. And then we basically mask the patch. So here's our patch. We're taking the alpha from our sphere and we're masking it so we just get that patch. Now, what this erode is doing, if we look at the final result and we zoom in, occasionally you'll need to erode the edge a tiny bit. Uh, if you don't do it, you, sometimes you get this weird like halo effect around the edge. So if it, it's like, you know, you see that you fix the, fix the edge here, but it's not fixing just around there. What we need to do is make sure that this patch extends a little bit further than the actual sphere render itself. So what we could do is just erode it out and that would fix it there. Um, there's other ways you could fix that. You could roto uh, stencil that off, for example, uh, or you could, for example, you could add to the alpha if you wanted by just adding a roto shape. So you could add more of the tree patch if you needed. There's, there's various ways you can fix it. That's what I'm trying to explain here. But this is the principle. So we have enough that covers it, but not you know putting it everywhere all over the image. So that is how you merge it over. Essentially you have background, you put the CG over, and then you're putting your patch over the top. And that workflow of doing that is very, very common for, for layering live action elements actually. So uh, you will do this uh, quite frequently. So one more example, uh, just to show where the edge extend doesn't work. So the edge extend is good for most scenarios, I guess. Um, you don't wanna overuse it. Uh, there are ways to despill edges and things like that in more advanced courses. I've, I've talked about that in the Keen course, for example. Uh, there's many different approaches. Uh, you don't want to overdo the edge extend. A lot of beginners will edge extend everything as soon as they see this technique. But uh, essentially, one way or one problem that happens with edge extend is that really, really small details, you can't grab the color because you can't really erode in and grab the right color here. So for example, if you look at these little twigs, we have a slightly out of focus twig. And I just wanted to add this to the example because you know, you're like, well, how do you fix the color? if the edge extent can't erode and pull that color out like we just did. So if I disable this node, you can see what the actual problem was. So this is a little bit semi-transparent. We know that the twig is brown, but we're seeing to a, a green leaf that's just behind it. So again, same problem, even though it's very, you know, it's not that out of focus, we're seeing that green contamination coming through the defocus edge. So what we can do is if we go to our result here, here's the edge extent. Uh, and we can see it's not really working because how could it work? It's contaminated right through the brown. So we actually need to replace that color if we want it to be correct. So when you start getting into small details and more advanced compositing, um, you might not understand why this is relevant if we're just talking on YouTube. But when you're walking, working on Dune and Avatar and these movies are seen on huge screens, you need to fix these little problems. They won't accept these type of problems. So we see that little edge is contaminated. So what we can do is we can just paint in the color channel only instead of affecting the alpha. So if our alpha looks like this, but our colors look like this, this is where this unpremultiplied workflow comes in really in handy, is we just take the roto paint 
and we set it to RGB only. We don't have RGBA. So if I paint in here, the alpha will stay the same. It's not going to affect it. So what I can do is I can just take a little bit of a brown color and just basically paint up that spot. And that's something you'd want to basically frame hold. Sometimes you would have to track that on if you're doing a more advanced shot with movement. We're just doing a still image here. But keeping this on a beginner level, essentially we're just going to paint that color out. And when we re pre-multiply this, you see the difference. If I disable and enable, we fix the color contamination that's coming through the edge. So we merge over. We have that fixed and all those little tiny details are kind of fixed over uh, the image here. And we can see that we have that defocus and, and most of the edge extend is working for various parts. Um, if we disable the edge extend, let's just do it to show as well. If I disable the edge extend, look at all the, the problem areas, even with this tiny amount of defocus that we were creating. I know that this defocus is correct. We're kind of rotoing the edge, but you know, a lot of those edges are semi-transparent. So edge extend will really help on, on, on little areas like this as well. So um, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Uh, if you guys like the video, hit thumbs up on the video if you want more videos like this. And that's about it.